Hey guys, um, I'm actually switching it up today. I'm not fishing or hunting, but I'm here with my new friend Dave Crispin. <laughs> and he actually uh, builds flintlock muzzleloaders. And I got to go to camp with him a week ago, just about, and he was showing me some he built and I just was amazed. So I figured I'd do a video and just have him show us what he does and see the art he makes because it's truly art and it is beautiful. So we're in his shop right now and that's what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to let the camera roll and we'll see what he goes over and shows me and I'm all about learning. And history is something I love so this is awesome. <laughs> Well, Vaughn, as you can see, this shop's not very big. <laughs> this yeah. is actually my my second shop. I have another shop, mm -hmm. and it's uh, there. I, in that shop, I have well, I have my bandsaw in it that I rough all my stocks out. That's and it. I have a Bridgeport mill machine in there. I have an old lathe in there and some sanders and different things in that shop. This little shop here. Is you can see it's only 12 by 12, uh, but it works. I do probably. 70 80 percent of my work in here all my hand work my following and my engraving and and the, and profiling the stock whatever it is uh, yeah. I do I do most of it right here um, your other shops at Aaron's yeah down there Aaron is my buddy too that's how I know <laughs> Dave now um, but Aaron has been in a lot of fishing videos <laughs> with me yeah. He's my dad and I's good good friend. Yeah, he's my son in law. Yep, that's yeah. how Aaron married my daughter and I keep telling Heather <laughs> she could have done a lot better. <laughs> well, we know that, but it, it worked. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's a good guy. Yeah, he is. He's a good guy. I know that. But, I wouldn't be uh, teasing if he wasn't. <laughs> um some people will say, Well, how did how did you get started in this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh Probably like like most men my age that are involved in in this, mm -hmm. we probably started with Walt Disney. Walt Disney when uh, Fess Parker played Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett, and we would watch that, mm -hmm. and then we would go out and we'd be Daniel Boone or we'd be Davy Crockett, and we would probably kill every Indian. And every bad guy within the community, and that's probably how it started. That was the spark. To, yep, that was probably the spark. <laughs> and then I just—I don't know—I just love the uh, look of the long rifle. Yeah. And the art that goes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I guess. Um, well, I, I took machine shop in school, and my machine shop school teacher, Gordon Davis. Uh, Gordon, he liked this as well. We built them in school. Yeah, that's and crazy. And things like that. Yeah, we yeah. built we built guns in school, in machine shop and repaired them and such like. So he he was a big influence on my life, and then uh, involved in this. Uh, the first one I built though uh, was actually before that. I was probably about 13 years old. Wow. And my grandfather had a, off the side of the barn. He had. A, like a little wood shop and uh, mm -hmm. cut the stock out there. My dad got a got a barrel for me uh, from Dixie Gunworks at that time. There were about the only people around that you could get anything like that from. I had an old Harper's Ferry lock I put in it and uh, it was, but it, it loaded from the front, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I bought and sold and traded and uh, I have uh, one, it's a double barrel. Uh, I'll show you later, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. that I bought uh, for like eight dollars. Then I hunted squirrels and rabbits and such like with that. So I've been involved in it for quite some time. Um, How old were you when you bought that double barrel? Well, I was still uh, riding bicycle, and uh, I put it across the handlebars of my bicycle and went down through town, the little town I lived in, with uh -huh. it across the handlebars, so uh, I paid eight dollars for that gun. You know? Lives have changed. Yeah, life has changed, yeah. I'm not but, sure if it's a good thing or not, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, then let's see, uh, actually, uh, 
I went into my work, I went in and I uh, was a torn die maker of my, my life, okay? And so, being a torn die maker, you learn uh, uh, metal finishing and it fits and, and all sorts of things like that. You, know? mm -hmm. you kind of learn how yeah. to do everything. So, yeah, and of course that, that was, a, but I still liked the long rifle and continued with it. Um, this particular rifle here, as you can see, I'm working on the patch box mm -hmm. on it now, uh, getting it fit, fit, fitted in and mm -hmm. such like. Can I show? Oops. Yeah. Now I have to be honest with you on this on this rifle. I actually did not make this complete rifle here. Okay. Um, this is actually Jim Keebler, uh a kit. Uh -huh. um, I had gotten two pieces of wood that was cut like two inches thick that was extremely, extremely nice. And I thought, what do I want to do with it? Well, I met Jim probably, I don't know, years ago back at Dixon's uh, uh, Gunmaker's Fair uh -huh. and uh, talked to him. And since then, Jim, is, his business has very really grown. I wanted to see actually what. So that's that's what I'm doing with this one. Oh, 45. Uh, yeah, this is a 45. I'm doing the patch box a little different. It's kind of a southern style box I'm doing uh, for this rifle and uh, curly maple, fine piece of maple. Most of the time, though, I'll start from scratch and build them from scratch. But this particular one, I didn't want you to think that. That I built this complete gun yeah. because I didn't. Jim had yeah. A, yeah, a lot to do with it. So is that the? That's what you usually use <clears throat> for wood is curly maple. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as you can see, I sent my maple for even for this gun. I sent this piece to him. Uh, the man I get my my wood from, he treats me right mm -hmm. and he knows how to cut it. If you notice, you see how the grain runs with the wrist yeah. all the way down through there. And he positions it right on the wood. He's got good wood, and uh, generally I get a good pick from him, you know, on my wood. So as far as this has got like a hundred percent curl in it, it's really pop when it's all done. Wow. But uh, <clears throat> this would be a, a nice little gun here. In your barrels, who? Okay, the different barrels. Yeah. Here's one here. This is. Uh, Corain, and actually they're right down the road here from where we live, down there, what's that, Spruce Creek? Yeah, Spruce Creek, uh -huh. yeah. That's actually a turkey choke, 20 gauge turkey choke, and they shoot like crazy. And uh, let's see, this one That's here, I like, to, I like to use rice barrels. Okay. I think that they build a, a and now, really nice barrel. Is that the name of the maker, rice, or? Rice, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I and mean, this is a be a rice barrel here. And this is fifty cow? Uh yeah, that's a fifty there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a fifty and a rice barrel. And uh I, I really like their barrels. Yeah. Every one that I've built, they I mean they put them right in there. And yeah, they're they're nice. So I like very to use good stuff. Well made. oh yeah. Um Jim Kibler, like I said, his locks, I like his locks. I think he's building a fine lock. Uh Here's some locks back here. I don't use his, I uh, use uh, Jim Chambers. And obviously this stuff's all made in the USA. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seems like a rarity these days, yeah. that's awesome. Like I said, I like to use all good stuff. Yep. Yeah. And uh, here's a lock. There's that. Okay, that's a, that's a Chambers, Jim Chambers, Siler lock. That's one of Jim's. This is another one here. That's an English uh, round face, what they call an English round face lock. That's like it's on my turkey choke. Oh, something okay. similar to that. Mm -hmm. On my fowl. Uh, what does he? What <coughs> the metal and stuff? What this is just like steel or what? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's steel. Uh, a lot of it's, a, a lot of the outside and the hammer and all is a casting. Oh. And then the internal parts are uh, maybe made by machining and such like. Oh, okay. And they're hardened, and uh, he he makes an extremely good lock. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. good stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, you want it to spark. You want it to go off. You want to fly those sparks. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they will do that. So, got good strong springs in them. And every uh, different areas had different style rifles. Southern rifles were a little different than the Pennsylvania rifles. You get into Pennsylvania, they had different style. And you look over here, I have uh, books and such like on all these different rifles, different styles, and yeah. research, 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 research. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the locks look like. See how they cock back? There's your half cock. And there's your oh, oh yeah. See that? And he builds all that whole mechanism. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty. Um, what I like about good. using his locks, or or even Jim's, let's say for instance, and I've never had any problems with them, but let's say something broke. Yeah. I can get back with them. They'll send me a part, and they'll go right in. You know. Wow. And so there's no uh, messing around. How long has the guy been doing it? A long time. Oh yeah, he's been there. So he's yeah. basically perfected yeah. it. Yeah, he's my age or a little older, and he's been yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's that. And they're nice people. Nice people to deal with. Yeah. You know. And. Uh, but actually, if someone says. Uh, that they'd like to, for instance, if they wanted to build a rifle like this from Jim, okay, you don't need a whole lot of stuff, you know, do it in a small building, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need a lot of tools, power tools or anything, it's just mostly all hand work, and uh, if you go on his sites, uh, his YouTubes, he goes from start to finish, he'll show you YouTubes on how to put one of these together hmm. and so it's for I'd say for a beginner that's the way to do I, it I recommend yeah for a beginner I, I kind of recommend that that's my thought you mm -hmm. know uh, even though I've been doing it for years and years I'm no expert I don't think anyone's an expert No, you learn every day you, yeah and that's what makes it interesting you uh, you're learning every day mm -hmm. and so then it doesn't become boring mm -hmm. it's never boring uh, I love to hunt with them. I love the we do woods walks, we do target shoots, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also do uh, 18th century uh, living history. Mm -hmm. uh, do that as well. My daughter, Heather, she likes to go to like Fort Frederick with me and That's pretty Fort awesome. Loudon and things like that. Yeah, she likes she likes all the trade blankets, just like uh, shopping, I guess, you know. But, <laughs> But uh, we have a good time together, so I think we make memories. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I think something you said is how you learn and it never gets old for you, and so yeah. and stuff shows that you have a true passion for yeah. it. That definitely is it. That's how it is for me, like hunting and fishing. Yeah. So when you have a passion for something, it's every day. It's exciting. Yeah, every, <laughs> every day is something new. For sure. Yeah, and the thing about this too is, uh, if someone says, well. I want to get into it, and who do I ask to, you know, if I run into a pro? In this business, uh, everybody is willing to share their experience. Yeah, it's There's awesome. There's nothing hidden. Yeah. And I know some real fine builders, some real great guys, you know, and, and uh, we we exchange thoughts and such like that. That's how it should be. Yeah, and that's, that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah if you want a future in anything, you got to be yeah. willing to share and yeah help others yeah. yeah and there's a lot of good builders out there yeah it, re it really is yeah and uh so i know i think i've asked you but like when you're building one from other than like the barrel you're getting stuff how you, do you have a timeline like how long it takes you <clears throat> you know a lot of people ask how long does it take how long does it take to build a rifle from scratch yeah okay and I really don't know how long it takes me to build a rifle from scratch. I can tell you what takes the longest amount of time. Yeah. What takes the longest amount of time is finding the tool that I just used and I put down. That's what takes me the longest, trying to find <laughs> where, where did I put it. Yeah. Okay. And it's, 
But uh, once again, I think when you get into uh, and carving and engraving and all, it's done just basically like they did 200 years ago. Yeah. It's all just uh, handwork and little engravers and such like. There's little engravers hanging up there. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, more back in here, but... Uh, Pretty That's pretty much, awesome. Pretty much like they would have done 200 years ago, you know, not much different. I think it's something that should never be forgotten and yeah. keep, you know, because that's a, like I said earlier, it's an art and it's something that, it's nice that you guys, what you were saying, how you guys share all the, when you guys are together because for younger folks and people like myself and stuff, if you want it to keep going, you know, that yeah. knowledge can be lost. Yeah. I mean, I see it. Yeah. Especially yeah. society, you know. Yeah. It's a different world with social media and everything and all that. And there's things like this that it's amazing. It truly is. Yeah. So, you're always looking for young fellows who want to get into it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as uh, to learn more and more about it, so. That's cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Any other thoughts or questions about it? What's your favorite book? What's my favorite book? Well, I have a lot of books. I, as far as a favorite, they're like this is uh, North Carolina Rifles, uh, mm -hmm. uh, George Shumway. I got those from George. These on uh, Rifles in Colonial America. I got them from George. Uh, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Um, Probably, what's my favorite book? Here we go. Now this, Dixie Gunworks, Union City, Tennessee. This was one of their catalogs. Okay? 50 cents. It was 50 cents. Yeah. And, uh, 1962. 62. I probably, <laughs> uh, I told you about the first rifle I built. Yeah. My dad got that barrel for me. Oh. Uh -huh. And he probably ordered it right out of this book. Wow. Okay, this was about the only people around then that you could uh, could get anything from. And so... Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. It, kind of, it's in great condition, <clears throat> too. You've had it. That's, that's nice. Yeah, and I'll probably flip through this thousands of times. And the, the new ones are like this thick. I'll probably have one over here. Do you mind if I show the camera? Yeah, no. Pretty cool. And matter of fact, uh, 1962. Kirkman, I, met, I met him down at the uh, Balmer Antique Gun Show when I was down at the Fifth Regiment Armory uh, years back. What was his name? Did you say? Uh, Turner. Oh, Kirkland. 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 Mm -hmm. you see that there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Union City. Yeah. And so their business is still still going, but oh yeah, yeah, their catalogs like that now. Thick now. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, wow. I'd say maybe that's one of my favorites, but because I've had it so long, but I'll show you another one. Uh, now, not because I'm from Maryland, okay? This You're one, not biased. You see who <laughs> you see who wrote this? Hartzler. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dan, he was from the area yeah. that I that I lived at in Maryland. Yeah. But he gave this to uh, Gordon Davis. Oh wow. Okay, in 1978, and Gordon Davis was my machine shop teacher. No. And before I moved to Pennsylvania three years ago. Yeah. Okay, we moved up. Um, my shop teacher. He always would stop by my shop, see what's going on, what I'm building, and such like. And before I moved up here, he gave me this book wow. on, on Maryland rifles. Wow, that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. So, kind of special, I guess. Because that is special. It came from him. Yeah. 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 Wow. And so, like I said, my machine shop teacher came and saw me. How old do you think he was? <laughs> uh huh. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, Let me show that. Pretty, pretty cool. Book. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
And of course, uh, like I said, research, research, research. Yep. And uh, that's, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, some more bags. Yeah. One. Okay. Probably have to wipe the dust off of that one. <laughs> this bag, that's a ball starter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This bag I copied off an original bag. Had the you know, pillow ticking that like that. Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. And it was a double bag. Yeah. Okay. This is set up for a 54 caliber. That I have. Oh, is it? Uh huh. <laughs> and that's your measure, power yeah. measure. Now, this. What? How old is this? That horn there, probably 140 years old, something like that. Wow. Yeah. It's original horn. It's a nice horn. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, cool. Patch knife. Yeah. Do you make this one? Yeah. Made mm -hmm. from a deer antler? From a deer antler, uh-huh. Deer antler and a bandsaw blade, <laughs> and they're very holding the edge. I see that. I think. Yeah. Remember the one yeah, last weekend? One, yeah. 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 So that's a double bag that I copied off an original bag, and a lot, of, a lot of times the straps would be a woven strap out of a loom, just like you see there, mm -hmm. all handmade. Okay. This actually, I think. That goes right there. Mm -hmm. Like that. That's all part of it. Well, like my wife said, Paula, she said, uh, you know, when a lady buys a dress, <laughs> what does she do? She buys a new pair of shoes to go Match with it. her dress, and then she buys a new purse to go with her dress. Well, Scott, when we get a, a new uh, rifle, well, we got to have a new horn, and we have to have a new bag. Matching. <laughs> the matches, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, That's funny. Yeah. I just saw these. Oh. Do you? I cast all my yeah. balls most of the time, yeah. He casts yeah. his own. Yeah, I do. Um, and what caliber is this one? That looks a little bigger. What would you say? 64. Or 69. 69. Uh-huh. I was gonna say that's way bigger than a fifty. Yeah. Let me show you that. That's pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fifty caliber is. I have. Well, my father has one that I used and got a deer with this past season. And then forty-five, a little smaller. You can see going so on and so forth. Huh. That's cool. Sixty-nine. What would you say is the most common? A fifty caliber? Probably the fifty. Yeah, yeah I'd say that's, that's too. probably. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what I figured. But yeah. you now know I know. have a, a fifty-four, and the fifty-four is a rice barrel. Yeah. And it's what they call a straight rifle. In other words, it's not spiraled. Yeah. It doesn't spin the ball. Straight mm -hmm. rifle. So what's the advantage of that? Well, in researching, we found that quite a few of your early guns. Were a straight rifle uh, barrel that didn't have the twist. Oh yeah, they and weren't. Isn't that is that like rifling? That's what they can. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they're rifled. Yeah, but they but they're they straight. Can, they're straight. They're not spiraled. Right? They're not spiraled. Okay, it doesn't spin the ball. Yeah, um, we find that they shoot very accurate. Matter of fact, I have one. My brother-in-law he has one, a fifty-four, and uh, it's a rice barrel, and that thing is he takes events with it. He shoots very well with it. Wow. Uh, one I thing never knew with, that. Yeah, one thing with the uh, straight rifle barrel, you can shoot round ball out of it. You can shoot shot out of it. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Or you can shoot what we call buck and ball. In other words, you might take your round ball mm -hmm. and put it in, and you might put six or seven, like thirty-two caliber balls on top of uh, it. Yeah. You put a wad on top of that, keep them from rolling out of course. Yeah. And let me tell you, that's a wicked load. Oh, I bet it is. <laughs> that's a wicked load. I've done that before that's with mine. That's pretty unique. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty wicked. Yeah. 
So, and they did that, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks. You can see the curl on that piece of wood. Yeah. Okay. Now, this one here is a colonial, what they call the colonial rifle. Let me take that out. What they call a colonial rifle. That, I had two pieces of wood that I sent to the same guy. Mm -hmm. He profiled all these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's a 50 caliber, what they call a colonial. It'll have a sliding wood patch box. And it's got, uh, I got it all packed over there. Like the lock is a round face lock, mm. like that, mm -hmm. okay? Which is Jim, Jim's lock. Um, and his barrel. But you can tell the piece of wood, it's, you know, it's a great piece. Of oh, wood. yeah. This is going to be a nice gun. Oh, but, yeah. But this gun here, when I was telling you about hunting and mm -hmm. throwing around, uh, it would take it, it would take a real a lot of beating, mm -hmm. you know, because it's 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 stockier. Oh, I can tell. It's I can stockier tell. Yeah. than than a thinner gun like that. Yeah. yeah. They get a nose cap on it here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that make a pretty nice hunting gun. Yeah. To the right person, I would let that go. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that'd make a good hunting gun. Some people used to say that they liked them the length that when you're loading, I don't know if there's any truth behind this, when you're loading, you wouldn't take your eye off the enemy. Oh, so it's like I don't know if there's any truth in that opera or that, you know, yeah. through the years, yeah. Yeah, and so, but this will, this will make a nice hunting gun. Yeah. And throw it around. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I'll dress it up too. I'll probably put carvings in and silver inlays. Oh here. yeah. A few, not too much. Don't yeah. Don't go overboard with it, but, yeah. Got a big uh, cutout in yeah. too for the patch box. You can stir your moccasins in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's awesome. Yeah, when when he died, that was like an error went past, you know, uh, never to be repeated. Uh -huh. Yeah, on that cardboard there. Mm -hmm. He'll cut that out, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to give that to Tom. Basically, the one out there in the building that you saw I was working on. Yeah. This original gun here. Yeah. Here, you can take it. Okay. And uh, the style of it is very, very, so close to that one out there. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, this is a style patch box that the, this original gun has. And I did two, like I said, like this. Yeah. Okay. And uh, curly maple. Well, this is walnut. This original gun, the walnut. Walnut, but, uh, yeah. It's a Tennessee Southern style rifle. Uh, yeah. I, I, Fancy rifles, yes. Okay, with bells and whistles and all the carving and silver inlays and all. But personally, myself, I like just a plain rifle. Yeah. I like to see the gun for the for the gun. Yeah. Uh, now, what when when is this from? What? How old is this? That one there, probably just early 1800. Wow. Uh, yeah, late uh, late 1700s, early 1800. Yeah. Wow. And so uh, it's uh, original. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. It is cool. And I thought one thing that uh, I noticed uh, when you look at the end of the barrel. Yeah. It's kind of offset. One side's a little thicker than the other side. 
when they rifled that, when they made that barrel, it went off to one side a little bit. Yeah, that's crazy. And, uh, yeah. And personally, I think that's just character. I, I just love it like that. Yeah. Now today, if we would buy a, a rice barrel and it was something like that, we'd yeah. be like, this, you know, what is this piece? You want of, it perfect. Yeah, yeah, we want it perfect. Yeah. You know, which they are, rice barrels are. Yeah. But uh, I'm just using that for an example. Sample. Yeah. yeah, but uh, and of course then with the Southern, you'd have a, a bag and horn. Yeah. Okay. Gotta have your bag and horn, just like the ladies have the new dress with the new pair of shoes in the bag. And so that's a southern style horn there. Um, and that the difference is they is, is a band. Bands. Yeah. And of course they're made from horn as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banded. Yeah. And it's pretty similar to what uh, what they would have carried at that time. Wow. Mm-hmm. And we have a southern and Just we have a southern sure. banded horn, so that would go with that rifle. Yeah, okay. that's pretty cool. Ball gauge. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's, cap, that's unique. Cap yeah. and ball, double barrel, and who's it made by? Original gun. Can you read it? T. W. Tigner, Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, right. and I bought that when. Uh, when I was just a kid and drove home, I had it across the handlebars of my bicycle going down through town. I paid eight dollars for it wow. many years ago, and I used it rabbit and pheasant hunt when I was a kid all the time. Wow! And it's got the original ramrod. Uh, and Tignor, I did research on him. He had his shop was on the main street of Richmond. Of course, they burnt Richmond down. But uh, I also saw some pictures of practically the same shotgun, but it was sawed off, and the uh, Confederacy used them. Uh, the the uh, cavalry, the cavalry used them. Hmm. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Of course, I don't hunt or shoot it anymore. But uh, yeah. yeah. You want to grab that next one? You yeah. Can, while you're down there. Okay, now I'll show you out there the uh, turkey choke barrel okay. by Corrine, and uh, that's this what is this it. is, uh -huh. that's mine, that's my turkey choke gun. Uh, I had the original uh, Fowler, and uh, I copied that one off of. Wow, so. it's a muzzle loading shotgun. I want to see somebody kill a turkey with it. We might have something in the work for the spring. <laughs> see. So, till the next time. Yep. Yeah. And then, of course, once again, you got to have a bag and horn, right? Yep. And a shot. A shot now. There you go. And there's a horn. Bag, horn, and pouch. Yeah. That makes that, this is that shotgun tick. This is full of BBs. Six shot? Number six, yeah. It's pretty pretty cool. Actually, uh, that that barrel, uh, Keith Castile uh, designed that barrel. And I talked to Keith about what makes it tick, and he told me how to load it and what to use. Mm. So, he's another builder, fine man, world gentleman. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, let's see, coming down this way then, uh, this is uh, probably, uh, I'd say, in the Lehigh area, uh, style rifle, original. You can tell Lehigh because of the way the it curves here, stuff. and then it has this, what they call a Roman nose, it goes down, the curvature of that. And, uh, what year would this? This beat. That would probably be about 1840, something wow. like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little earlier, give or take. Yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> and it's a cap lock. Mm hmm. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and then coming on one up. This is the one I shot, right? No. Oh, no, this, this is, was the other one you had this, up there. Yeah, this is one I just finished up. 
go ahead. And that's a Lehigh County. Now, Lehigh County. Uh, once again, it's got that Roman nose. Yeah. In here, but it's got a double step wrist. If you see that double step, it goes here and it goes here. Okay, very typical. Uh, if the, the side plate is uh, very typical. Yeah. Of what uh, what they would have used back at that time uh, with the arrow. And you, and you built you it. built this. Yeah, I built that one from scratch. Yeah. Wow. Except I, it's got a rice barrel on it, uh -huh. and uh, it's got a Kibler lock on that one. And a curly maple, once again. It's beautiful. And if you notice the silver inlay here. Yeah. See that? Uh, typical of Lehigh County, you, you'll find that that area would have put, some people think it's an Indian, some people think it's a lady, some people think it could be the Sons of Liberty. Uh, personally, I, I think it represented the Sons of Liberty. That, that's my own personal opinion. Why I say that is, uh, would they put an Indian on their rifle? I kind of doubt it because they were kind of enemies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's just my thought. Uh, a lady, I don't know. Sons of Liberty, I think so because it looks like it might have had like that, the hat that they would have worn. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm, kind of flops over. Uh, so. We really don't know for sure. It's got the sliding wood patch box and uh, very typical carving. Uh, Copy the carving off this carving on this side off an original gun. Yeah, that's pretty. They did a lot of incise carving, not so much relief carving. Yeah. Uh, so, and I just shot that one. That's ready to go. Beautiful. Yeah. And they did kind of a if you notice the finish on it, it's like a ball-in reddish yeah, I know color. That. Okay. Uh, original powder horn. This is a York County screw tip horn. And how old is this one again? Uh, probably goes early 1820s or so. 1820s like powder yeah. horn. Yeah. The horns are a whole different ball band. Different thing to collect. A uh, knife I made and copied it off an original. Uh, Long Hunters would have carried a knife very similar to that. Uh, Long Hunters would have been someone like Daniel Boone. He would have been a Long Hunter. Somebody goes out for a long period of time to uh, get deer hides. Very profitable business back then. And uh, to sell the, uh, the fur. Yeah. They carried maybe something uh, similar to this hawk, which uh, that's not an original, that's made by Beaver Bill. Beaver Bill, I think, makes some of the finest uh, hawks you can buy, all hand forged. And uh, I put the handle in it a little different. That brings us up to <laughs> beans were in the State College area, Bowlesburg, what, just down the road. Yeah, not far. Okay, just yeah, next like her, town. Yeah, or, one, like 20 or, minutes. Or part of the state college, I guess you could say. This rifle here came from there, uh, Douglas Young. From Bullsburg, Pennsylvania. And this, and the date, what do you think this one was? About the 1830s. Oh, okay, 40s. 1840s, yeah. Yeah. Wow. From Bullsburg. Yeah, I believe you could shoot that. Cap lock, too. Because mm -hmm. it's in fine shape. And then yeah, it is. Great form in it, sharp. And it's funny, though, like the stock, it's skinnier. Yeah. See, different styles, different areas, yep. different styles different period of time. Yep. Your early guns, some of your very early guns had real wide butt plates. Uh, these more slender. Yeah. And then to go along with that, well, I can't wait to show this one. You gotta have your, your miniature. 
All right, guys, this is amazing. And you built this from yeah. scratch. Yeah. This. You, you came by and for Yeah, this is a miniature of that. And Dave completely built this from scratch. And to show you how big this is, here's a pen. And a pen, just to give you size, is like a little over a quarter, almost halfway as big. It's very. What'd you say, third? It's a third copy of that original one you just had. Third you size. That Douglas Young. But this is amazing, and it does fire. Yeah, it's calibered for a BB. It's calibered for a BB. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a yeah. But this is amazing. Amazing. And the intricacy is just awesome. I still like the uh, fine uh, curl in that it, it is, it, yeah. Hmm. That's pretty amazing. And of course a little box. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask, did you make that too? Oh yeah. Let me yeah, put that in there and I'll... Yeah. That's awesome. I don't want to make a powder. I made the box too. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Dave Miller Pro Tool Kit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I got it marked. Yep. So I know I'm down. Where it should just went right down in there. But like I said, I was shooting it the other day and I didn't swab it out. A little tight. Yeah. I'll prime right from the horn. I always like to, for safety reasons, put my plug back in my horn. Well, let's see what happens. I hit it. Hit a little low. A little low, was mm -hmm. it? So. How far is that you're shooting? That's probably 45, 50 Yeah, yards. it's a pretty good shot. I think it's 50 yards. And it's a real small little dong. Yeah. But that's no excuse. <laughs> so. Everybody misses. I'll let you shoot it next. So All right. I'll load it up because I got everything right yeah. here. Just easier, so. Sounds good. Nose. <laughs> well, just because I build them doesn't mean I can shoot them. <laughs> but this is a Bucks County style rifle here. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, I like to I like to shoot and hunt with. How much easier that went down. Yeah. What are you aiming at? That little that little piece of metal strip. I see. That's pretty pretty tough. Yeah. I shot it the other day I hit it down there. Oh I believe you. But we'll see what I can do and then we'll see what Eric can do. Looks like I can hit it. Okay. Wrong mentality. You should be like, well, I'm, I'm gonna ready. hit that. All okay. you gotta do is cock her all the way back. It's on half cock right now. Put it on full cock. All right. Put it put it right on there. Follow your shot through. Squeeze her off. And I'm uh shooting a, shooting a flintlock built by the guy you just saw in the video, Dave Crispin. It's a beautiful rifle. Flintlock. And what did you say? This is modeled off of after Bucks, Bucks County. County. Yeah. Beautiful. Engraved by him and everything. See what I can do. First time shooting it. I'll tell you what, you were right off of it. Was I? You were a little high to the right. Was I? Yeah, looked like it. Yeah, a little high to the right, but I'll tell you what. Close. Yeah, you want to do it again? Yeah, I'll shoot it again. That was okay. fun. Yeah. Now that you know the feel of it, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead. Load it back up. Try her one more time. That goes off really fast. That's a good ignition. Yeah. Fast ignition. At least for front lock, it seems like, from what I've been around. How high was I, or what? You were, it was, I mean, you were real high. No, you wouldn't, huh? Mm -mm. Oh, if it no. was over a little bit, you would have hit it. You oh, would I? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you were a little to the right. To the right. Yeah, if you had been over just a, probably so an it, inch or so. So yep. if it was a deer, it was toast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty, I don't usually, I'm learning how not to, you know, flinch and try to hold. Probably. I just haven't did a lot of shooting uh, freehand. That's what I need to practice. Oh, off the shoulder, yeah, it's a lot different. Because I always kneel down or try and get, obviously, when I'm hunting like a tree or. All right. 
Yeah. Well, and if I hold but too long, it's like what you were saying. I start playing, so I just kind of, and then when I'm on it, I pull. On it. Yeah. I just, just find a happier, happier medium where. And I, another thing too is follow through with your shot. Yeah. Like you, you know, don't drop it, drop your arm real quick and all that. See how I got it marked. Yep. That's how. Like, I know you don't aren't a fan, but my inline's marked like that. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> Now, do you always fill that up? That little yeah, about like that, yeah. The yeah. pan. Gotcha. It's called your pan. Yep. <clears throat> and say to yourself, I'm gonna put one right in that sucker this time. <laughs> I'm gonna put one right in this that sucker this time. <laughs> I saw you was doing this a little yeah, bit. I was. I didn't see it. You should have put it down. Yeah. yeah. Did I, I didn't hit it. No. Hmm? It dings, doesn't it? Oh, it'll rock. Yeah. It's yeah. on a chain. Yeah, you'll see it shaking. Yeah, Your turn, know. Aaron. We got the man up. Old Aaron's <laughs> up now. <laughs> You nailed it. Oh, clean, <laughs> yeah, nailed clean, Pilgrim. Unreal. Oh, there, yeah. got it. Yeah. And he says. And he was the one that was saying he can't shoot. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> well, we'll wrap this video up then. Okay. I appreciate it. I've, as you saw him with Dave Crispin, and he's a good friend now of mine. I'm glad to know you. I appreciate you showing me everything you did. That is, is awesome. But, thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. We got something coming up in the spring. So, I'm not going to give anything away yet, but I'm excited to do that. But as you'll see, probably around May. That's probably when, that's when the season comes up. So, we'll probably about when that video will drop, hopefully. But, Anyways, we're wrapping this up, so till next time, thank you Dave again. Keep the sparks flying. <laughs> there you go.